everyone, Danae Bushcutter here with Weld.com. Today I'm going to be doing some underwater welding here at the Ocean Corp in Houston, Texas. So I'm going to have a standby diver with me today. Um, that's the other gentleman that's going to be in the tank with me while I'm diving. Anytime we have a uh, diver in the water, we always have a standby diver. So if we lose communications, diver gets any kind of trouble, our standby diver gets dressed as quick as we can, gets down to the diver, checks him out, then escorts him back out the water. Today, we're in a shallow tank, so we're gonna have our standby diver uh, is also gonna be our camera guy. So he's gonna be down there keeping an eye on her while she's there uh, doing some video stuff and also being her assistant. So if she needs help with anything, uh, she can radio up to us and we can radio to a standby diver and help her out. Being a welder myself, how many welders do you have like come and take this course and think they're gonna be an underwater welder? And like, how often are you actually welding underwater? So we get um, quite a few students who went to welding school and they go, I want to be an underwater welder. And then they get here and day one, we let them know that you're here to be a commercial diver, not just weld underwater. If you're a diver, you put your diving hat on your helmet, you get down and get that's your transportation to the work site and you weld, you burn, you do your construction or whatever, come up. And so it's just transportation to get you to the work site. You're a construction worker. You just happen to be working underwater. Uh, as far as the amount of welding, uh, varies quite a bit. So if you're offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, not a lot of welding, uh, maybe some anodes, you might be doing some repair work. Closer in inland diving, uh, you could be doing quite a bit. So it just kind of depends on what area you like to do and what you're good at. What? So for the underwater welding, you're going to only use uh, stick welding mm -hmm. and we'll only use DC current. So we tell everybody we only use DC current. Underwater we use uh, electrode negative. Yep. And so we want that tip getting really hot because the water cools really fast. Uh, when you start welding, uh, you have to turn off your welder brain and turn on your diver brain. And a lot of it goes by feel uh, because you have the puddle cools real fast and you have bubbles coming up. So it's kind of hard to see the puddle, but you feel the rod kind of melting down. You usually want to do just a straight drag. Then it's pretty much about controlling your speed and your angle. Right, so we got two brands here, Broco, which is kind of an industry standard. Uh, basically it's a uh, 60 series electrode and we've got it dipped in wax. So you can see the wax at the end. So whenever uh, the diver gets ready to start, we'll break that off, scrape it down. Otherwise it's not going to light. Uh, then we have a Mako brand. This is a new brand that we've been testing. Uh, it doesn't have a wax coating, but the way they bake the flux on keeps it nice and tight. Uh, these electrodes actually are pretty easy to start and stop, and uh, they run pretty hot. And when it comes to underwater welding, is there like a major coupon that you could do that would be good for all the positions, or do you have to specifically get each certification for the different positions? Right, so here's the school uh, for top side. We have everybody start off and they can get a one, two, three, or four F because most of your stuff underwater is going to be fillet weld. You're going to have a lap joint, you're going to have repairs, that kind of stuff. So we have them do that. And then in the water, you can get a two F or a four F here. Okay. And so we kind of got a in between, not the easiest, and then a little bit more harder kind of thing to get. Uh -huh. For your welding, you have to get a cert for each, each. position okay. that you're going to be welding in. It's not gonna be a lot of critical welds. You're really not gonna be doing any pipe welding. If you do, then you have to resort to hyperbaric welding, which is you have a habitat, basically over whatever you're welding on, they blow all the water out, you've got fans for getting rid of the smoke. Your diver comes down, gets into the habitat, uh, takes his hat off, puts his welding hood on, and welds in the dry, okay. everything is done. Take everything out, reverse the process. Pretty much in the Gulf of Mexico, they don't do a lot of hyperbaric welding because okay. it's expensive, yeah. uh, way more expensive and uh, a lot more work and you have to have your diver specially trained. Most of your stuff is going to be wet welding, which is basically your diver jumping in the water, in the surroundings and welding right there. Uh, like I said, you got your nuts and bolts construction. 
you're underwater burning. So we use an exothermic rod. It's hooked to a welding machine. So you're down there and you're ready to cut something up, make it hot, just like you're welding. They turn it on, hit your trigger, oxygen goes through, it lights. These things heat up to about 10,000 degrees and they can cut through your barnacles, iron, sharks, whatever. All right. So right now I'm getting ready to go do a night dive. See how it is at night. Well, I just wrapped up my night dive. I will say getting in and out of the water was very cold, but once I made it inside, I was warm. It's definitely a lot harder than the day because I could not see a dang thing. So trying to figure out where my electrode was in the joint was very hard, um, but I liked the challenge and it was a lot of fun. Now, probably one of the biggest questions is how much money you actually do make. I know there's lots of myths out there of actually how much money you can make. I've seen a lot of stuff out there in social media and um, you know, I'm gonna be an underwater welder and I'm gonna make 300,000 a year. And I laugh and I tell the students, if it paid 300,000 a year, I would either be on my sailboat in the Keys or I'd be underwater welding. Yeah. So does it quite pay that much? So the way it works is um, when you come to our school and you graduate, you can go two different directions. One, you can do inland, okay. which is rivers, dams, bridges, water treatment plants, sewage treatment plants, nuclear. So for inland, when you get out of school, you're basically considered a diver. Okay. If you want to be a, like a deep sea diver, a gulf diver, where you're diving on the oil platforms, the gas platforms and pipelines, um, when you go out, you start out as it's called a diver tender. So you're kind of the lowest level person. Uh, you're holding the diver's hose, you're tending the diver's gear, running equipment, setting up rigging, running the decompression chamber. Uh, from tender, you make lead tender. And I tell everyone, the world starts to turn. So your respect level goes up, your pay goes up some and responsibility goes up. So now you're over the crew, m much more dive rotation. Doesn't mean you won't dive right out of school. Uh, but the reason is they're not going to just let you get out of school and, and the... say, hey, we need to go jump you in 200 feet of water and put this complex stuff together in zero visibility because you don't have the experience. Yep. It's kind of like any job. you got to work your way up. Like on average, how long is that time period that you at least you would recommend being a tender to get all that experience before you move up to lead tender. Right. A, a lot of this is what's re really neat that I liked about the diving is it's dependent on you. How aggressive are you? Um, this industry will weed you out if you're lazy. How long does it take from the time I graduate school to make diver? Everybody wants to know. One to three years. What is that based on you? It's so the way it works is let's say we graduate the same time, we go to work at the same company and they go, hey, we have a six week job, really long job, great. We go out and after three weeks I go, hey, I miss my girlfriend or my buddies or whatever, I'm going in and you stay out. Well, you just made three weeks more money mm -hmm. and three weeks more experience. So my whole thing is push, 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 work, 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 make diver. You know, okay. that's the whole thing, make diver, and then you can kind of relax a little bit, get in the club, and then yeah. it's worth the, the sacrifice and the push to get you know to that level. So once you make diver, then you can start doing deeper stuff. So you can go to, from surface flight air, you go to mixed gas, and that's gonna be 165 or so, depending on the company, um, down to about 300 feet. Okay. And so you're breathing a helium oxygen mixture. The deeper you go, the less time you have to work. Okay. And so the deeper you go, they're expected to produce more. That's why we start up 20 feet of water. You have all day to work, 250 feet of water, not a lot of time. Okay. Uh, after about five years or so, you've got some deeper mixed gas, more complex dives. You have the option of becoming a saturation diver. The difference is you're going 300 to a thousand feet and it's technically, if you want to speak, one dive, because what happens is typically it's in the US, it's going to be six divers get in a chamber and it's basically going to be about nine feet wide, 20 something feet long. It's got a transfer lock, which is typically where your shower and your toilet is. And then your bell, 
uh, attaches to that. The whole system is pressurized. So if you're diving to 500 feet, it's pressurized 500 feet. So you're basically living at depth. So you look out the window and people are walking around. You sound like Donald Duck in there. When it's time to dive, you and your bell partner get in the bell. You have all your gear, your hats, your wetsuits. You take your lunch, you get in there, close the hatch. The crane picks up the bell, lowers it down. And you can see over here, we got our bell. And our one diver gets out and he works for you know, around three hours okay. and then gets in. Next diver gets out and works three hours, gets back in, close the hatch, pulls it back up. It mates back up. Those two divers get out. Next two divers get in and keep everything going. Now, how long can you stay in one of those chambers? Typically, it's going to be a three hour dive mm -hmm. and a three hour dive. So uh, it's usually an eight hour excursion total okay. from uh, seal to seal, get the bell down, coming back up. A saturation job, so to speak, mm -hmm. will last about 30 days on average. How much can you make? 50,000 a year mm -hmm. doesn't seem like a whole lot starting out. Um, but again, seven and a half months worth of school, no college degree. Once you make diver, you know, starts going up, mm -hmm. you know, 75 plus. Once you start getting your mixed gas and everything, especially your sat diving, you know, six, six figures. figures. Okay. Right. But are you going to be in the two, 300,000 range? If you go start your own diving company, maybe, then maybe. but okay. yeah. And I've got friends who've done that. On average, like the lifespan of a diver. I know that's a big, I mean, there's a lot of myths out there of, oh, you, you know, eight years and on that, you know, day one after those eight years, you're dead. Total myth, misunderstandings of that. Uh, what happens is you have a lot of divers they go into diving in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s. They make a bunch of money. You know, they pay off their house, their condo, sailboats and Cadillac and gold Rolexes, which is what divers tend to do. And then they go, OK, I want to have a more stable family life uh, because when you're out, you tend to miss birthdays and kiddos first steps and Christmas and holidays and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm actually a third generation diver. My dad and grandpa were divers. Um, 25 years, 26 years uh, as active divers. Um, mm -hmm. So there's real no age, age limit, limit to do it. Depends as long on your you health. Stay healthy. And... Right. You good? All right. So I just got done underwater welding and burning. It kind of sounds like I passed my 2F, 4F. I might be a little shy on that one getting my certification. Definitely a lot harder than it looks. I give credit to those that weld underwater. Definitely not the same thing welding top side versus bottom side. Um, that was probably my biggest hiccup and learning curve was I was thinking of everything I had to know to weld top side and it's completely different when it comes to bottom side. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you have any questions, drop it down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're not learning something new every day, you're not living. Have a good one.